<laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Little uh, technical uh, difficulties here. Some things got switched up uh, on the Google Plus end and as well as on YouTube uh, in the couple months that we've been gone. But uh, welcome once again to Transformers for your listening pleasure. I am Weird Wolf along with Guard Convoy. Hello, everybody. And Natsume Ryu. I love carrots. <laughs> carrots. Uh, not joining us tonight is Insane Galvatron. Uh, he's a little bit busy right now, so he can't uh, can't make it tonight. And Mirai Baby is away at uh, TFCon. So, uh, we in Canada land. <laughs> we wish her a safe and happy trip uh, from there and all the way back to California. Um, so, uh, yeah, we've been gone for a few... Uh, few months now. Well, actually, uh, the crew recorded an episode or two about a month ago, uh, slightly after Acon. Uh, I was not able to join you uh, for that recording, um, but I was with you in spirit. A uh, little backstory on what happened to me. Uh, um, most of you may remember uh, at around the first of the year, uh, I moved um, and uh, we recorded a few podcasts until I got a new job, and uh, I was at that job about a month, and uh, I was a semi-driver, and uh, uh, I had a horrible accident in uh, in the near the beginning of April. Uh, I'm going to share with you uh, a screen cap, if you're watching, of what happened. Um see here. I guess that, if you can see it. Yeah, um, I drove a tractor and trailer off of a uh, bridge and went over about a 45-foot embankment. Um, and uh, my partner and I, we walked away. Uh, I broke my arm uh, in two places, and uh, we were very fortunate to be alive and very thankful. Um, but uh, yeah, I've been on the road to recovery. Uh, I don't have full use of my, my right arm still, uh, but uh, probably never will. I can't fully straighten it now. I was um, going to ask you about that. Yeah, uh, and as a matter of fact, in a few weeks, uh, I'm going to have to uh, have orthoscopic surgery uh, to remove some bone fragments that's still in my elbow. Um I can't talk a lot about uh, the the hows and whys it happened uh, for legal reasons, um, but uh, needless to say, I'm just thankful to be alive, um, and uh, I've had a lot on my mind and a lot to deal with uh, physically and mentally. Um, I still have a lot of trouble uh, sleeping at night uh, simply because of the accident. Uh, it, was, it was very horrific. Um, it happened about 3.30 in the morning, so kind of take from that what you will. Uh, and uh, it's possible I don't have a job whenever uh, I get back, you know, get fully healed up or as healed as I can get. So that's, that's also a lovely thing. And uh, on top of that, I have like no income now. Workman's Comp, uh, they're supposed to pay me two-thirds of my income uh, before the accident, before the accident, I was making very good money, and since uh, I don't even get, uh, I don't even get two hundred dollars, and I've got to support four people on that, and it's 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 been very rough financially um, on me and my family. Uh, uh, but the good news is, is uh, uh, in September uh, I am getting married uh, again, uh, and. I'm really excited about that. Uh, my fiance, uh, she has uh, three children. One of them's uh, fully grown now, and then the uh, the other two are still at home, and and, and I love them to death. Um, they are so wonderful and have been so supportive of me uh, throughout this uh, healing process. Um, but I, you know, I don't want to be a a downer here. You know, I don't want to, you know, fill the podcast up of uh, of my my misfortune, but you know, a lot of people might have wondered what happened to our podcast, and uh, uh, that's that's a little bit of what happened is the fact that I am the one that generally edits the podcasts and uh, puts them up for download, and uh, um, 
it's it was really difficult uh, for uh, others to, uh, to take that on and and uh, get that done in my absence. Uh, I want to thank Insane Galvatron for making an effort uh, a couple times. Um, I believe both of those episodes that got recorded are up now on uh, iTunes uh, because uh, I believe uh, Battlesai from uh, Geek Existence he did the uh, the uploading to the server and I believe he added it also onto the server as well. Um, so if you want to listen to those episodes, they should be available. Um, also, because of my uh, uh, my lack of uh, gainful income right now, uh, I haven't had a whole lot of uh, toy acquisitions. Uh, although my love for the collecting and uh, and everything has not waned, uh, I do have uh, a few things that I've picked up from here, from here and there. Uh, most of them were before the accident and a couple since. Um, but uh, we'll talk about those a little bit in a moment because I believe uh, Guard Convoy and Natsume has some things they want to talk about as well. Uh, how are you guys been doing since the uh, uh, since the hiatus? Uh, Guard Convoy? Oh, I've been doing pretty good. Just mostly working as always. As always, I'm always working nights, so it's rare when I get to record, but I'm glad to be here. Just been going to conventions, working, and buying toys as always. He didn't believe me when I said we'd be able to record today. He said it would jinx it. No. Uh, Shows show, show what he's, uh, uh, where his mind's at, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Just because we haven't been here in, uh, on a regular basis in a few months uh, doesn't mean that we completely disappeared. You know, the website's still there. We're still here. I, you know, everything's happy and <laughs> um, uh, Natsume, how have you been been doing? Good. I'm moving in three weeks, so yay, except for stress. So Where you moving to? I'm moving to OKC uh, for mm. another job. So for 3D arts, which is what I went to college for, um, doing all kinds of fun stuff with apps and video games. And just right now, I don't have a lot of money to spend on anything. I don't think I actually have anything new from the last episode. I've just kept, and especially I don't think I have anything different out on my shelf. You know what? I don't know if I had Shockwave last time. Shockwave. I don't think you did. Because I, I know I had Smokescreen, Sideswipe, and Air Raid. Because those are my, my most recent ones besides him. And I would really love to have a sandstorm right now, but I have not seen one on the shelves yet. I've seen a couple of springers and blitzwings, and they're all gone now. Nothing. My friend Eric shelf. found a sandstorm today. Where where was it at? He didn't tell me. He wouldn't tell me. <sighs> I need to ask him now. I have yet to see a sandstorm in store. I haven't even seen Springer or hmm. Blitzwing. Well, uh, I actually a um, um, couple things. You know, uh, was was fortunate, and I was able to uh, to pick up uh, uh, both Blitzwing and Springer, nice. uh, and uh, they are phenomenal toys. Matter of fact, I like my Springer so much. I'm I'm going to unload my uh, Warbot Defender. Uh, I, I probably won't get as much for him now, but you know, wow, uh, I, I like it that much. I'm going to I'm going to sell my uh, Warbot. Um, you know, I've got. Uh, I've got some stuff that I pre-ordered before the accident, and one of them is uh, Fortress Maximus uh, from uh, Captured Prey. And uh, before the accident, you know, with my income, I could have afforded it easily. Uh, now, not so much. Uh, but, um, yeah, uh, I hope to be able to uh, pick it up soon. Um, I explained my situation, and they've been gracious enough to uh, to hold it for me. And... I just hope their patience continues because, you know, it's going to be a while before I can afford a three hundred dollar toy. You know, um, but uh, and also I've got some stuff through TF Source that I pre-ordered too that I uh, that uh, is due. And you know, with the with the stack, you can't cancel it once uh, uh, the stack is uh, is actually in stock. And uh, and one of those things is uh, uh, is the uh, Hexatron, Terminus Hexatron, and I so want that, but I don't have the 200 plus dollars to get my stuff out of the stack. 
Um, so a lot of those toys have got to wait. Um, I've picked up. Uh, what else did I pick up? Um, well, right before the accident, actually about a week or so before the accident, I don't remember if I talked about it, but uh, I did pick up uh, Apex and Geminis, uh, the uh, demolition crew uh, from Captured Prey. Uh, those are phenomenal figures. And uh, I am still waiting on something. I was able to find it very cheaply, um, and, but it's, it's not a Transformer. Uh, I actually found a Brave toy uh, for under $20 shipped. Uh, from China. Uh, I picked up a uh, Goldron uh, Avenger for $18 shipped. Wow. So, uh, yeah, I, I think the the seller probably didn't realize what he had <laughs> um, because he's probably going to spend that much in shipping alone from uh, from the other side of the world. China. But, uh, yeah. yeah, his loss, my gain. Sorry. <laughs> um, but, yeah. That's that's about it for for my acquisitions uh, since uh, since at least April. Um, uh, John, uh, you got uh, quite a bit of stuff, I'm sure, to tell us about. Oh yes, a whole bunch of stuff I could talk about. Start with several Springer. Off, <laughs> several off topic, but I'm not going to talk about those for a bit. Um, I've been in a car robots robots in the skies kick lately. So I recently picked up a Hasbro Robots in the Skies Optimus Prime and a Car Robots God Magnus so I can have Omega Prime. So my Optimus is English, but when I push Magnus' button, he yells at me in Japanese. So they're quite confused, but they are phenomenal toys for their time. I'm just I'm blown away by how awesome these things are. Even if Magnus has the longest legs of any toy I've ever seen. You know, before I uh, before I moved um, in, in with Insane Galvatron for a short while, uh, I actually had uh, Godfire Convoy and God Magnus, so they both spoke Japanese actually, and they are phenomenal toys. I actually love the uh, the Japanese versions better than the American ones. I think the colors yeah. were more vibrant, um, and I actually thought the uh, the Japanese uh, screaming voices from them was kind of novel. So yeah, the the God Magnus is gorgeous. It's a gorgeous blue. It's it's a phenomenal toy. It's making me want a fire convoy to go with him because the most of the car robots figures had more shiny sheen to them compared to how the Hasbro ones were more dull. Not nothing wrong with the Hasbro ones, but there's just something about the original car robots versions that are just so nice. And to mention, it's on the way. I have the Car Brothers from Car Robots, uh, Wild Rider, Mock Alert, and Speed Speed Breaker. Their releases coming in the mail. I got them for forty eight shipped, so that's the, about sixteen for each. So that's the Japanese versions or Japanese versions. Oh, nice. That's actually a very good price for those. Yeah, that's. I saw an auction last night on eBay, so I'm like, ah, yeah, I'm grabbing that. And then another thing on the way, which is I've wanted one for years, and I've, a friend in Canada is hooking me up thanks to TFCon. I've got a G1 Star Saber coming in the mail. It's yellowed a bit, but hey, for $90, I'm going to be happy with that toy. Hey, anytime you can have a Star Saber, that's... that's uh... That's a nice pickup. I really love that toy. Yeah. I, I actually had a uh, Victory Saber uh, with uh, Victory Leo um, and Star Saber. I uh, had them back in 06 uh, before my first big sell-off. Uh, the uh, Victory Saber and Overlord were the two of my uh, my crown jewels. Actually, I had Victory Saber, Overlord, and Death Source all, in, uh, all at one time. And uh, I think out of all three of those figures, uh, Death Source and Victory Saber were the uh, the two most complete. I think the only thing I was missing on Victory Saber was the actual uh, blade of the sword. I had the hilt, but I didn't have the blade. And this was back before uh, repro parts were really uh, prominent. 
Um, also, I had uh, uh, on Death Source. The only thing I was missing was his rifle. Everything I had everything else. Now my Overlord was far from complete. I I had both the uh, Godmasters, uh, but he was missing like a nose cone uh, or a, a a cone that goes on his shoulder. He yeah. was missing all of his guns. Um, and a couple other things too. I think one of the f tail fins it was missing, but other than that, it was complete and, and very minty. Uh, I was I was just happy to even have the mold. Um, but yeah, congrats on the star saver, man. Yeah, I I would love a more minty conditioned um, star saber and all, but I'm like this thing is complete, even though if the gun and the sword blade are reproduction parts and it's yellow. But I would I love the I don't collect G1 toys as much as other people do. I'll get them if I get a good price. But the four Holy Grails of mine were Star Saber, Overlord, what was the other one? Desaurus, and Diatlas. That's my four Holy Grails from G1. And to have one of them coming in the mail good, for less than $100, <laughs> for less than $100, I'm a happy camper. Are you sure it's not a knockoff? I'm, I'm guaranteed it's not a knockoff. Wow. It's from a reputable seller. What if the uh, the stickers are really crappy? I can buy repro labels. Uh. And do they I have repro labels for uh, uh, for Star Saber? Yes, they do. They're twenty three dollars. Oh. It's going to be worth buying. Nice. And, so you can bet you checked like, on them already. <laughs> I'm going to be like, I'm going to try if it's possible to whiten him, because. It's mainly the V-Star that's white, uh, yellowed. The core very robot Very difficult. Is... Uh, or, I mean, I'm sorry. Be very careful when you do that because I have yeah. heard... I don't know how uh, how true it is, but I've heard that if you do the uh, the hydrogen peroxide uh, treatment to uh, whiten it up, it does whiten it up uh, quite a and bit. And it yellows again. Uh, well, no, not necessarily yellows again. I hear that it makes the plastic more brittle. That's the thing. So, I want to buy the most junk G1 toy. As a test, I'm not going to do it unless I'm 100% sure it'll be safe because I'm not going to ruin my star saber. <laughs> that would break my heart. <laughs> but I'm going to be happy to have a G1 star saber and because whenever the Masterpiece poll in Japan ends and star saber wins, I'm going to be happy to have a Masterpiece star saber with the G1 star saber. It's going to be very fantastic. Yeah, yeah, that would be pretty awesome. And I'm trying to think what else I've gotten lately. I've got some of the Super Robot Jacoke and Brave toys. I got Volfog, Shoryu, and Inryu, Gao Gaigar, and I got Might Gain. But those are phenomenal toys, but I still need to find a shelf for them. Do you have the uh, the actual toys or the just the Chigokin ones? It's just the Chigokin ones. I don't have any actual Brave transforming <clears throat> figures because those things are expensive. Not necessarily. Uh, I got Might Gain for about seventy bucks. Well, when you collect multiple toy lines, it you got to pick and choose. Yeah, yeah, that's true. When I'm collecting Power Rangers, Common Rider, Gundam, oh, the Bug People, okay, the love, Bug People, yes. So I got to pick and choose what I buy, and I love the Super Robot Jigokin line. It's phenomenal. So I'm happy to have a super only, opposable Gal Gygar to go with my Gurren Lagann and Megazord. The only uh, Chugokin that I have is the uh, uh, Big Volfog. Uh, I really, really like that figure. Uh, it's really posable. I just wish it was transformable. Yeah, the else. thing the thing with the Super Robot Chugokins, they're more for a super posable version of this robot that can practically do anything it could without the combination feature. Yeah, it might be. Uh, you could actually feature them in a BDSM uh, film. Pretty much, they are insanely articulated. <laughs> I can't believe how how easily people just glazed over that. <laughs> <laughs> just oh. Uh, I do want to uh, uh, point out that uh, uh, we are broadcasting live on YouTube uh, for all of our listeners uh, who are listening in that way. Uh, Natsume Ryu is is monitoring the uh, the the comment section on there. So if you're listening and have some uh, comments or feedback or questions that you may want to ask us uh, to uh, talk about here on the uh, podcast, or if we see something that you uh, may mention, 
uh, in the in there. We may mention you here on the podcast and uh, uh, and everything. Just interact with us. Uh, we'd be happy to hear from you. Also, check us out on uh, Geek Existence forums um, on the website geekexistence.com. Uh, we uh, really need a lot of uh, uh, traffic on there. Um, you know, I, I think it's a it's a great uh, fan resource. Uh, whether you're just a fan of t- uh, geek tech or uh, um, uh, toys or anime or anything, I mean, uh, it's a great place that people can use to uh, talk about uh, their uh, their geeky uh, hobbies. Um, so take advantage of it. It's free. Uh, join up. Um, also, check out our uh, our. our um, I guess I don't want to call them sister podcasts because they're not a podcast. <laughs> but uh, the, we do have uh, Geek Existence uh, Tech Reviews, Gadgets and Tech Reviews, uh, done uh, uh, almost almost daily, I would think, by uh, uh, Zimzabob, uh, Daryl, and uh, uh, uh Kelly. Um, they, uh, uh, they do a lot of uh, great reviews of uh, gadgets and tech. Uh, and they also do a lot of giveaways. So mm-hmm. if you uh, if you want to check that out, also uh, Natsume Ryu does uh, Geek Existence Gaming uh, with uh, with some of her uh, her fellows and uh, broadcast with Kelly and with Skittles. We we post videos on there. Not so much lately. Um, same reason I haven't been posting on my YouTube, my own channel. But we're trying to to get back into it. Same as with this podcast. Yeah, uh, it's it's easy to fall out of uh, uh, out of rhythm whenever uh, you know life steps in and everything. I mean, uh, that's that's the thing. You know, we we do have real lives and 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 everything. We do realize that our hobbies are just that they're hobbies. You know, I mean, toy collecting uh, for me uh, since since everything went down has has become become so. It's it's almost to the point where it's back burner. Well, it is back burner, really, uh, because I can't take an active interest in in things that I, I can't go out and, and buy, you know. Um, and you know, like you, you're getting ready to move, so it's a little hard to uh, get on there and and broadcast uh, game streaming games and stuff whenever you're you're preparing to move. But uh, um, check out those avenues. Uh, Geek existence is growing every day. Um, check us out. And uh, spread the word. Also, check out our sponsor, CapturedPrey.com. Great toys, great prices. Uh, CapturedPrey.com is a great importer of Transformer toys. Um, you really can't beat their prices. Um, I know a lot of people uh, spout about BBTS and TF Source and other uh, other places, but I have never had a bad experience with Captured Prey. I think they're they're phenomenal, um, and you know, the, uh, if you haven't tried them already, check them out. Uh, also, uh, something else to look for coming up. Uh, we do have a uh, live interview with uh, Trans Jazz of TFW 2005. He is the uh, uh, progenitor, uh, if you will, of uh, Slagacon, uh, the convention that will be coming up here in a couple months. Um, it's rather quickly. Uh, but uh, this time it's going to be held here in Kentucky, uh, near Cincinnati, and that's going to be uh, a, a big thing. I know last year's uh, attendance was not exactly what they had hoped, um, but you know there was extenuating circumstances, and uh, uh, you know he's not going to give up because this he's, he really has a good thing going there, and uh, we're going to give him uh, a avenue to uh, uh, talk and. Uh, he has announced that uh, um, uh, about a month or so ago, uh, the first guest for Slagacon is uh, Buster Jones. Uh, many people may realize that uh, he was the voice of Blaster and uh, Doc. And Doc. Yeah. <laughs> Although uh, it's kind of it's going to be kind of humorous to see uh, see how it pans out uh, because uh, Botcon last year in Dallas, I believe. Yep. Uh, yeah, he uh, 
he didn't remember Blaster at all. <laughs> he thought that it was a G.I. Joe convention or something. And, and he talked mainly about Doc. But I'm sure that in the year plus that he's he's went back and brushed up on his uh, his hopefully. Blaster role, you know, hopefully. And, uh, you know, especially if he's going to be accepting uh, invites to other conventions for Transformers. Right. Hopeful. Uh, but, yeah, he's, he's going to... Uh, uh, he's going to be there, uh, and I, I think uh, Trans Jazz has some uh, other uh, other information to pass to us. Um, uh, either of you all considering uh, going to uh, Sharticon or Sharticon or uh, you know the, at the convention here in a couple weeks in I Charlotte, think, North Carolina? I think we're both done with conventions uh, for most of the year, for most of the rest of the year, except for possibly. A fest at the end of next month. Yes, which is still that, iffy for me because it's moving. Mm. I'm going because normally I go to several cons a year lately, but because I want to do TF Con next year, I gotta say uh, no more cons really. So it's going to be my last con until A Con next year, so next June. So Very sadly, no Charter Con. Very long time for me. Yeah. Uh, I actually may be going to uh, Shardacon uh, this year. Um, and saying Galvatron is going, and he's got some stuff in his collection that he he's wanting to sell off. And he has a table, and the tables come with uh, with two uh, admission badges, and one for him and one for a, a helper. And he's asked me to go along with him uh, kind of as a helper. So uh, that is if his wife, uh, which, by the way, in saying Galvatron recently got married, so... Congrats! Yay. Yay. Yeah. I'm sure he'll want to talk about that a little bit more whenever, um, whenever he gets back on here. But uh, uh, us from uh, Geek Existence and TFYLP want to uh, extend him and his uh, new wife a uh, big hearty congratulation and uh, uh, many happy years. Um, but yeah, uh, I may be going to uh, to Shardicon with him, so uh, that'll be. That'll be cool, um, and then of course I'll almost certainly make it to uh, uh, Slagacon since it's here in Kentucky. It's like an hour and a half away uh, from where I live, so um, I should at least be able to go to that. Um, but yeah, we uh, we got some cons coming up. I, I wanted to go to TFCon this year, but you know things kind of derailed that. Um, I think a lot of us did. Yeah, um, I had to give it up. Because I went to Anime Monastery, but mm. I had good times there. But I wish I was at TFCon right now. Yeah. Um, but you know, recently uh, we had BotCon and San Diego Comic Con, and uh, uh, there were some great uh, costumes and stuff that uh, that uh, I saw some pictures of. Uh, not so many. You got a little roundup of uh, some pictures. Just a little one. Unfortunately, I'm not finding a lot of photos online. I pretty much have to find everybody I know and pictures they were tagged in, which isn't a lot, surprisingly. Um, I'm not sure, since unfortunately I didn't go to BotCon or ComicCon, if there just weren't a lot of Transformers cosplay or if people uh, just was, aren't posting people. There pictures. was a ton. I've seen several photos. There was an IDW, More Than Meets the Eye, uh, Cyclonus. There was a drift. There was a whole slew of that movie was all, characters. That was all BotCon. That's what we're talking about, BotCon. Okay, well, Comic-Con has some, too. I'm just saying. You were saying there wasn't much. There was a ton at BotCon. I have, all those, I have all those brave. pictures. That's not a ton. There's, I, have, I literally have like 10 pictures over here of those characters and other characters. Not that many. If I know there, more than half the people cosplaying, I think there's not that many people. There was twice as much as there was last year at BotCon. Really? Yeah, there was like five robots at BotCon last year. Three of them were you, Velocity, <laughs> and Mirai. <laughs> there was there was more than that last year. No, there wasn't. They weren't full on cosplayers, but they were there. I mean, there was that that movie Bumblebee. There was the those aren't robot cosplay. Iron High. <laughs> no. There needs no. to be more brave cosplay. There's not enough brave. Cosplay. Yes. Gerard, right. there is, I wanted to do Galgagar, but there was a perfect Galgagar that's already been done, so I'm like, I can't do it. 
There is a perfect guy. Somebody needs to do mode. Mike Gain or uh, or uh, one of those guys. I would love to do a Mike Gain, but I gotta do IDW Overlord. <laughs> Here is a challenge, Golderon. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's like all gold. How are you gonna do? <laughs> that would be nuts. You would blind gold people. Foil. Just be in a sunny room. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I can totally show you. There's a Japanese guy who made a Gundam completely out of gold foil. It is oh, completely wow. gold. <laughs> I could be, find it. It's on the forums, why? but it, give me a second. Mm. Anyway, back to back it, to the yeah, and stuff. So we 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 de- we we detract ourselves. Yes. Yeah, so some of the costumes you might have seen at Botcon if you went there. If you didn't see there, um, this is one of the cosplayers actually, and it's one of the members of the trans costumers. You were probably like, who the heck is that, and why is there a furry to our convention? <laughs> Well, it's actually because they were doing uh, this character, the original character, um, and they couldn't do the full costume in time. Uh, so they wanted to do, like, the head, the tail. They didn't want to do just, like, a suit cosplay or whatever, you know, um, which a lot of cosplayers, it looks like, did this year. So we have tons of photos where they did that, and then for the rest, after they finished foaming out the start of the head, they actually sent it over to Mirai, and they had her flesh out a lot of the parts. Um, they commissioned her, which was really cool. Um, so that was who that person was. They were original character that's like a, I think dragon. I'm not. I don't think it's a bat, but the ears always make me think it's a bat. Um, we had. Uh, I never remember the members' names, but they had a heat wave cosplay, and I think. Oh, rescue they, bot. Are you yes, serious? Yes. Yes. They actually have the whole cosplay, but I don't think they were able to ship it. So they just took the hat, and I think they actually have a different hat that was signed by Steve Bloom at a different convention. And they wore the whole costume at that one, I think, yeah. So there was that one. There is the Drift, um, which since I have the 3D model I made for Drift so I can make a costume for him one day, I am like, all of a sudden I was disinterested, but now I'm looking at this again, I'm like, yeah, my Drift's going to be better. And I'm going to do SG Drift, too. It's going to be SG. <laughs> um, Shattered Glass is playing. You can think so. I'm, gonna, I'm still going to do him. I have all the, I, you gave me the gun for him. I would hope you want me to do him. Shattered Glass awesome. Drift is bad. We have Cliff Jumper, and I don't think I know this cosplayer. I know someone who did a Cliff Jumper, but I think this one's different. Um, I'm really I not sure. It doesn't that look that the is same. the one from Trans Customers. You I think, think so? That is. Maybe it's just yeah. a bad photo, because it's, it's a BotCon photo, and it'll, you'll see some of the later photos. It's horrible. But yeah, I know. I noticed that it was really shiny, and I remember the one from Trans Customers had a really shiny one, but it just didn't look right. So I wasn't sure if it was. Uh, we had the Cyclonus that John Which mentioned fantastic. already. Fantastic! I love it so much. I think Except the Cyclonus, the drift. The uh, well, IDW more than meets the eye. Cyclonus. That Cyclonus is missing one of his horns. Yay. Oh, I fail. Okay. So I think the the drift, the Cyclonus, and then this Transformers Prime Soundwave are all in the same group because I've seen a ton of group photos of them. So I'm pretty sure they were moving together. However, I don't think any of them are from the forums, so I don't have any work logs or anything to share about them, sadly. There was another Transformers Prime Soundwave walking around, though. They don't have a ton of photos of, but they are all in our forums. Um, this is obviously oh, Lion Boogie's iconic. Bumblebee, the same that one he's been bringing phenomenal. and yeah. upgrading every year. Um, this is Sergeant Duck's Movie Ratchet. She's awesome. currently stationed out in Hawaii, so she was happy she was able to make it this year, and unfortunately I was not, and I really wanted to meet her. Um, she's also done Transformers Prime Ratchet, and a couple of other characters that are not at the top of my head right now. Uh, then we had Mirai. She brought Breakdown again, and then instead of making a full rig since she was doing all the other commissions, she did just a helmet for Skyquake, and she entered it in the, the art contest to show, basically, to BotCon that... I wish she would be able to be here to explain it herself, but she's at TFCon. But the, basically, the, the costumes are art as well, and the way that they always sort of sort of waylay the off. cosplay yeah. contest every year, which yeah, I they, hear that they did again this year. They, they didn't even have it. They, they said they oh, didn't have it, and then they canceled same thing it. as last year, pretty much. No, they actually that, just canceled that is it. So they sad. Didn't have it. Yeah. That is so sad. Well, she did get first place. Um, as you can see there, that's the little ribbon. She had her display book showing the how-to photos on the front, and then there's the actual helmet itself on a uh, thing. Uh, this was a different Transformers Prime sound wave, so that makes it... I know there's at least three different Transformers Prime sound waves that were here. 
um, which is really cool. This is the only picture I found of this one that was on the BotCon website. Um, Sergeant Duck's ratchet again. There's, a, there's another picture of Mirai's Skyquake helmet, much better. You can see the definition since it's not all, doesn't have the flash on it and all the brightness blown up. Um, then we have Laserbot, who is the knockout. She made all the other helm hats here. She has a thing called helm hats that do, she does commissions for. So these, that's her hubby is breakdown. Um, and then these are all of her other friends that commissioned helm hats from her. So we have Arachnid, uh, Smokescreen with his little arm thing, and he has a blaster too, and then uh, Starscream. And she made a second Starscream helmet and actually gave it to Steve Bloom. I think there's oh, a video wow. floating around, and I forgot. I think he actually put it on. He said some things in character, and it's hilarious, but I could not find it. That, um, that is phenomenal. Then this is Sergeant Duck's... I have so many pictures of Ratchet. But that she has that lights. one right there just blows me away. She is... Um, all those light up, the eyes light up, and I really love her little toe hook. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately... A, it's not a camel toe hook, huh? <laughs> no, it's oh. a high. Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, oh, oh. oh. <laughs> Duran's back. Duran is back. Jonathan is just imagining this right now. Oh my goodness! <laughs> at least, not, at least it's not a moose knuckle hook. Uh, oh fucking <laughs> god! That way she doesn't have. To me. <laughs> There's no prancer sizing for her. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> it really is a good costume. I'm sorry. Oh. God. Unfortunately for us and for her, when I believe she used UPS to ship it back, the rig did not survive, and she is not Ow. rebuilding it. So this is the only time she wore this this uh, this wow. rig, and I, Thank I think you, they UPS. finished. Yeah, I know. I mean, I'm just I'm thinking to myself. I mean, what? I mean, I would imagine the box would have to be mauled. Yeah. Um. But yeah, unfortunately it didn't survive. And, and currently, right now, she's a bit depressed from it and has no plans to rebuild him. Sad I, face. If, if she listens to this and everything, I highly encourage her to do it. That that was a phenomenal rig. Uh, out of all the pictures you showed me, that's the one that blows me away the most, personally. Um, I mean, just the, the colors of it, the aesthetics of it, I think it, it looks absolutely spectacular. Uh, it would be a shame to not see it again at another convention. Mm -hmm. It really would be. All seriousness. Another fun fact about this costume. Um, her 3D modeler for this is... Oh, I can't remember her name now. Oh, give me a moment. The same the same one who's been modeling a lot of the Transformers characters on DeviantArt. Oh, I can see their face. And they also cosplay the, the sort of human humanized Sunstorm slash... Is it Starscream? It's a. It's basically reversible, and the Sunstorm one I think glows in the dark. Razzy, oh, Razzy, nice. Razzy made the model for her, so that was pretty cool. Um, and then we go, and this is like the one picture I have from Comic Con. Right over here on the left is our robot. This is Velocity, um, another member of the trans costumers, and she's cosplaying Edie from Mass Effect, which she did at some of the conventions we went to earlier this year, but they weren't Transformers ones or anything. Um, and I don't know. I tried to find pictures of her, like, in... I don't know if she took Knockout. I think she took Knockout to Comic-Con and BotCon, but I cannot find any pictures. She didn't so, go to BotCon. She's taking Knockout to... Um, to TFCon? TFCon. Alright, so she was just there for Comic-Con and then TFCon, right? Yes. Okay, so that explains, but I still think she took Knockout to Comic Con. I don't now. think she did. She took Yuna, I know, but I don't think she took um, a Knockout. All right, well, we'll see more pictures of Knockout in a couple days. So everybody, by the time this is posted, stay tuned. Look for pictures of Knockout again. Um, so there's her phenomenal ED, which everybody has praised her on at just how well she pulled off the character. I, uh, I mean, a ton of people have complimented her on... Uh, Basically, how did you do it? You were the best ED I've ever seen, all kinds of stuff. So there's our lovely robot lady. Um, and it is it is a spectacular costume. Yeah, it does really, look good. It really looks really looks enjoyed good. spotting a little bit. I, uh, even though I've, I've played my Mass Effect just a very little bit, um, 
I didn't know the character's name, but I did recognize it from Mass Effect whenever I saw it. So just the fact that a passive player can actually identify a character uh, that that she may have that is a cosplayer, um, that's that's something too. Because you know, sadly, I, I've seen a lot of cosplays. You're like, yeah, if you tilt your head kind of this way, uh, I can kind of see it, you know. But other times, you know, there's you know ones like like that costume. I I found that one a very good one. But yeah, I'm I'm blathering. That's all right. We love her costume too. We can all blather on about her costume. Going back to Botcon, we have some group <clears throat> shots. Um, so this includes not only Lion Boogie's Bumblebee and Sergeant Duck's Ratchet, but also Lion Boogie's Sideswipe, worn by Marianne, and Lion Boogie's Ironhide, worn by Wayne, which, um, yay, they're back. So he brought Ironhide back. I think Ironhide some, has some upgrades, and then Sideswipe was built specifically for this year. Um, very exciting, and it looks good. It looks so good together. Ah, I wish I could have been there as Rampage. You could have hopped. Yeah. You could have hopped on over and uh, and uh, joined the fray. I know. I the only thing keeping me was I think a plane ticket. Yep, because mm. I would have room would have been cheap enough actually because I wouldn't have been staying at the Botcon hotel, um, and I probably wasn't gonna buy a ticket to Botcon itself. So the only thing I really needed was food, and then the trip, pretty much. So. Meh, but it's all right. And I had another thing that popped up that made it even harder to get money for it. But yay! Um, another Skyquake picture helmet. This one's from Botcon. You can tell because they have the flash on, and you can't tell any definition or depth. <laughs> uh, we're back Fun to the beginning, so that's all wrong. of it. That's all the pictures. It's exciting. Yes. 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 Um. I guess we need to head into the uh, the recent news and everything from BotCon and uh, San Diego Comic Con, um, but I'm sh I'm sure that uh, John kind of wants to rant and rave about something first, so we'll let him get oh, that yeah. out of his way. Oh yeah. Uh, okay. To mention something recently in the news, uh, the company Harmony Gold, who is known for producing the show Robotech in the 80s is suing Hasbro over the San Diego Comic Con exclusive Transformers G.I. Joe crossover set that has a Sky Striker with a fast pack done as G1 Jetfire. For those that may not know, back in the 80s when Hasbro created Transformers they took from several toy lines to make their Transformers. One of these toys was the VF1S Valkyrie that they made into G1 Jetfire from the show Super Defense Fortress Macross. And then a show called Robotech came out, which, which took footage from Macross, took footage from a show called Mospedia, and footage from a show called Seventh Cross back in 85. Jetfire predates um, uh, Robotech. Well, to get back on a tangent, Harmony Gold is currently suing Hasbro saying the jet the jetfire from that set is going is currently infringing on their rights and their intellectual property and they're suing for damages they're suing for for ownership of every one of these sets yeah, good luck and with ordering that. a re and they're, re they're asking for a recall of everyone sold and for ownership of everyone that has not been sold yet. Yeah. That is why right now that toy will not be on sale for at, at Hasbro Toy Shop until this lawsuit's over. Good luck with that, getting getting those back from people who's already paid good money for those. Yeah. Exactly. Well, it's not going to happen when anyway. It comes it's to so Harmony absurd. It is. It's, it's, it's very absurd. Yes. You want to know why it's absurd? Because Harmony Gold is the definition of a supervillain. They have held on to the rights to Macross for over 20 years now, almost 30, and have done nothing with it. Ever since Robotech in the 80s, they have made one proper video sequel called Robotech Shadow Chronicles, which is garbage. And they have done everything they can to prevent Macross from coming over here. I hate Harmony Gold with a passion because I'm a diehard Macross fan. 
Because, like, there's so many Macross series that cannot come over because Harmony Gold blocks it. Well, and like you said, they don't have rights to sue them over IP in the first place because they don't own the IP. They just have the right to sell that part of that thing under that name in the U.S. Exactly. They do not own the rights to to the VF1S Valkyrie because... It doesn't look exactly like it either. Uh, I think there's enough differences that that Hasbro will win this. I I, I really don't see Hasbro will win. Hasbro will guarantee win this lawsuit if they go to court. What Harmony Gold's hoping is Hasbro will settle out of court and not want to deal with it. What I'm hoping happens is Hasbro takes them to court, sues them so much, bankrupts them, and then gets a hold of the Robotech license and frees Macross from their death grip. That way we can have shows like (laughs) Macross 7 and Macross Frontier come over here. Can't you tell I hate Harmony Gold? Good luck with that. Yeah, it's just... uh, because it's all from a issue in the 80s from the rights of Macross that Harmony Gold has a rights, and now Harmony Gold are dicks. Mm. So pretty much if you buy anything Macross, you are my enemy. <laughs> or not Macross, Robotech, excuse me. Please buy Macross stuff. Well, I, <laughs> I, I, I kind of wanted the, uh, the Rick Hunter Skull Leader. Um, there's a Valkyrie that is coming out soon that's fully transformable. Um, yeah. But it's like 140 bucks. Yeah, uh, the the Arcadia, which used to be Yamato Toys until they changed names, is about to re-release their Roy Falker's VF1S for 150, and that's a phenomenal toy. Yes, they, mm. there's been Macross toys continue to be produced, except Harmony Gold prevents them from coming over to the U.S. They flat out prevent it. It's it's horrible. Mm. So one day I'll have my Macross in the United States and I'll be a happy man. But until that day, I will swear and cuss out anything Harmony Gold. So don't support Robotech. Support Macross. Okay, my rant's over. Speaking of uh, speaking of uh, cussing people out, you know, uh, I just want to go on record as saying that uh, any anyone who has a masterpiece Soundwave can die. Uh, I have from one. Toys R Us. Yeah. Um, oh. It's I'm yeah. hoping. I can buy one when I move. Oh, you know, Good luck the, finding one. The, that, the Fortress Maximus and the Terminus Hexatron are the three toys that, that have come out this year that I am absolutely kicking myself for not being able to get right now. Um, I have two of those three. You know, and, and well, uh, also whenever uh, um, uh, Quadruple U comes out, I, I have to have that for obvious reasons. Um, but, yeah, those those three toys that's been released already, um, they, they, they are must-haves for me. And the fact that that, that Masterpiece uh, Soundwave will have come and gone, I, and by the time I'm able to make money properly again, that toy is going to be so astronomically high on the secondary market that I may think twice of even getting it. And it makes me sick. It really does. Um, and then what makes me even more angry is, you know, I, I shouldn't be really surprised by this, but I was looking on Facebook the other day, and um, I, I noticed people were posting on the Repro Labels uh, page how uh, they had received their Masterpiece Acid Storm, and their box was slightly dented. It was really really banged up in the mail or from the mail and everything. The toy was fine, but you know, the box was all dented and they were just ba- basically crying a river over it. Did and they pay for mint or what have you? They got uh, it from Toys R Us dot com. Oh, Toys R Us is Toys R Us. known for not uh, yeah. shipping well. But you'll you know, get a bunch of damaged stuff from them. You know, I guess it's just because of my perspective that I'm looking at it right now. You know, I would be happy if I was able to afford to get one of yeah. those figures. You know, I didn't. I wouldn't care if the box is dinged all to hell. I would love to just have the figure. You know, but yeah. you got people on here saying, well, "I'm thinking about sending it back and complaining and everything." I'm like, keep be happy you that you, that. you know, be happy that you're even able to get it. There's a lot of people out there that can't even one afford to get the friggin' thing and two or find it. Yeah, there's people that can't even uh, can't even get it because there's not a Toys R Us nearby, or they sold out online long before, you know, within like 15 minutes of going online. You know, yeah. It's like be happy that you got the damn thing. 
You know, exactly. I, 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 it really ticks me off sometimes the fandom how you know they will they will moan and whine about something, you know, and they should just be happy that they have it. You know, um, you know, going back to like what we were talking in the uh, in the pre-show uh, before we started broadcasting about the uh, uh, the Star Saber. You know, you had a uh, uh, you're getting a yellowed complete Star Saber with you know repro parts. I personally owned a near complete Star Saber, uh, a complete Victory uh, Leo. You know, so I had a near complete Star Saber. You know, but I wasn't sitting here whining that I didn't have the uh, the the sword and everything. I was happy I had the figure. Yeah, I had the mold. You know, I had a very incomplete Overlord. I loved that toy. You know, that's one of my favorite toys I've ever owned. You know, I, I'm I'm not going to sit here and cry a river over it. You know, I, I, maybe I'm kind of blowing it out of proportion with, you know, with the thing that was posted on Facebook, but. It, it kind of puts, uh, helps you put it into perspective, you know. Whenever you sit back and you know, like, I'm sitting there seeing this guy. He took like multiple pictures of you know some slight creases in the boxes uh, in the box and like a corner ding and everything. I'm like, is the toy fine? You know, and 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 numerous times somebody asked, is the toy okay? And he's like, yeah, yeah, it's fine, it's fine. It's so like, what's the problem? As you long know, as the toy's fine. That's what matters. Yeah. You're not going to be playing with the box. The yeah. box is just there to get the. If you are a mint and seal box protect collector, protect until it's in your hands. If you are a mint and seal box collector, I totally get that. I totally get that. But if you're going to open it, ways. It matter. Well, there, there's other, there's, there's other avenues that you can get to get a mint, mint and seal box, uh, toy. You know, and if you expected to get mint and seal box from Toys R Us. Yeah, you got what you, you know, what you paid for. So mm -hmm. you know that that's the, I'm getting down off my soapbox because you know whenever you mentioned that the other day, uh, or it made me think back to the other day, and that really just kind of made my blood boil. Um, you know, I and I know it's a very common thing in the fandom, and don't, yeah. don't get me wrong, I do kind of see the, uh, um. Uh, the 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 complaint there I do really but if you're gonna sit there and whine about it uh, and and post pictures online about it you you got what you paid for I mean you know go to big bad, big bad toy store I'm sure they're gonna get you might pay, pay a little bit more but you know you're gonna get a pretty mint box from big yeah. bad toy store so you know that being said let's move on to uh, some other news. Um, Mainly from uh, let's let's start with Botcon, I guess. Uh, either of you have any uh, Botcon news that really sticks out to you that you want to talk about? I do. I have. There's a couple figures that I'm very excited for because I recently got into the IDW comics comics more to meet CI and robots in disguise. So I'm very excited for the the tailgate they're making, the swerve they're making. Really excited for those figures because I love that comic and those characters are so nice. And another thing I'm excited for is the Armada Starscream because I love Transformers Armada. That was a huge part of my childhood, and I'm excited we're getting a really good figure of what to me is the best Starscream that's ever been made, character-wise. Well, <laughs> you know, it makes me feel really old whenever you say Armada was part of your childhood. <laughs> I was actually... I was ten. <laughs> Is that better? I was twenty-four. <laughs> no. Yeah, I, I was. I was getting back into collecting after having been out of collecting for like ten years. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, Armada. Uh, actually, course, RID so. and Armada was the two lines that I compl I I had everything, including store exclusives. I had everything loose and sealed from both lines at one time. Uh, I got in with Beast Wars, got out of Beast Machines. I was into R.I.D. a bit, but Armada is what really hooked me, and I've stayed with it ever since. Armada, you know, looking back, it had some high points, but um, I think the low points in it kind of kills it it's for me. Not the, the, the whole Armada trilogy, uh, or the the Unicron trilogy, 
I don't I, I don't really feel it with those. But I survived not, the trilogy. I couldn't get through R.I.D. because it was R. just R. too so repetitive. Much fun. Yeah. It's such a fun show. R.I.D. had some great toys, but the you know, the cartoons are a little bit silly. Uh, I love it. Armada had a personally, I think Armada, Energon, and Cybertron the to- uh, the, uh, the 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 anime the cartoon was stupid. Uh, I, I will it. defend Armada. Armada has some dumb points, but there yeah. is some good fiction in there. Like the Starscream story is really good, and the Unicorn honestly, Battle itself is honestly, utterly amazing. Can, can you tell me that you're looking forward to a DVD release of Armada just so you can watch Carnival? <laughs> no, I don't want to watch Carnival. That's just, that's just stuff. But there is some good points in Armada. Like the Unicron battle, the entire end of the show is fantastic. And Starscream himself is just phenomenal in that show. But it's not the best show in the world, but I still love it. Yeah. I mean, there are some good points. I mean, like, uh, I, have to, I have to admit, Tidal Wave... If they released a, a yes. masterpiece tidal wave, I am all over that sucker. Just give me a new tidal wave, period. I would love yeah, I, that. I, I don't know why. I mean, he's a boat, but I, I love that figure. Uh, he's yeah, huge. I know that's what she said, but um, it's it, it was a really really good figure. Um, it was probably one of the best in the line, in my opinion. Um, oh, before we go too far, let's uh, let's talk a little bit a bit about. Uh, you know some of the people that are listening, um, talking about the uh, uh, inability to find figures, uh, you know, nearby. Um, I believe Daniel says that when MP10 came out uh, in Canada, he saved up a hundred and ten dollars to get it. You know, which is about what it was in store. And then when the price went up to one hundred and eighty, uh, whenever he went to check out, it's like it jumped, you know, instantaneously. Um, I had yeah. to pay 150 off eBay to find a MP10 convoy because there was a local collector buying up all the local stock and sending it to other collectors, so I couldn't find one locally. I know for a fact that uh, Lexington, Kentucky, there is a uh, there is a scalper at that Toys R Us. I don't know if he's still there now, but back whenever MP10 came out, I knew he was still there because they. As soon as they hit the shelves, they would be on the shelves for like five, ten minutes, and they're gone. You know, nobody hardly ever saw them in store. Uh, fortunately, uh, Insane Galvatron helped me pick uh, one of them up. Um, actually, no, that was Hot Rod, uh, uh, Target Master Hot Rod. It was um, MP10. I actually went in. There was one left on the shelf, and I put it on layaway immediately. I didn't have the money that t- at that time to buy it outright. But I put it on layaway, and yeah, if I hadn't have done that, I would have never got one. And you know, these scalpers aren't helping things. And then you see these people that that complain that they get they get a dinged up box, and and they're talking about raising a stink about it. And I'm like, really? You know, I would love to find you got it. Tell. Yeah, just be I happy you got it. I have to pay a markup on eBay because I can't find one locally because another collector just sent all our stock to other collectors, which there's nothing wrong with helping your fellow collector, but leave one or two behind because most of the time it's not – yes, they're scalpers, but most of the time it's a collector buying up all the stock to middleman to other people, and when you have so many collectors in an area, you got to fight with each other because North Texas is loaded with Transformer collectors. It's nuts how many of yeah. us are around here. Um uh, poster of Skittles 20, uh, he says, uh, or, or I'm sorry, Skittles 2009, it kind of cut it off at the end of the line here, but uh, says he's talking about the uh, Cybertron figures uh, getting cheaper on the aftermarket. Uh, he grew up on the toys, and uh, they're good like fine cheese. <laughs> I was cracking up about that, Skittles. Yeah. I know. It's weird how the Unicron Trilogy toys are working. On the aftermarket, Armada is going up. Cybertron's going down. Energon is about the same. R.I.D. is going up, but now, for the most part, I will it's give about you the same. that uh, the Cybertron Prime or, or Galaxy Force Prime is probably one of the best Prime toys. Uh, that toy my, is phenomenal. Yeah, I, I, just the bulk, He's got like the right amount of bulk and the right amount of features, and he just looks cool. 
Um, I have to give I have to give him that. that. You know, if I, I bought the Cybertron DVD box set just because I like looking at that design of that Prime, <laughs> and that's the sole reason. Um, there's a few other good molds. Uh, I kind of like the uh, uh, the uh, hot rod from Energon. Uh, not, I know a lot of people didn't like that toy, but for some, there's something that worked about it for me. Um, and uh, Cyclonus from Armada was pretty nice. Um, yeah, there's there's other ones, but and of course we have to have uh, Armada to thank for getting our first Unicron toy. Um, yep. Yeah, I can't, can't I can't let that go by. Mm, yeah. Uh, moving on. Uh, other BotCon news. We got a little derailed there. Um, uh, Nuts made. Do you have anything you want to talk about specifically that was real at BotCon or San Diego Comic Con? I like toys. 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 Toys are good. Is, that's from that. What is that from the 2010 BotCon? Yes. I like toys. Toys. Um, I actually. I think I liked a lot of the reveals. Like, I know we're not supposed to bring this up because Mike's not here this week, but I really like the Beast, the Beast Wars yes. reveals. Yes. Um, they look fantastic. In both modes. Absolutely mm. spectacular. Um, I have to find pictures because there we go. No, no. Let's let's let's. Well, I don't want to just I don't want to show them, but like other toys. Cy- Cyburn Two said specifically that he he wanted. To gush about them next week, so we'll we'll save the the Rhinox and, no, and the Wasp. No, I'm not later. saving them. I want to talk about them. Mute. I will cut this out. <laughs> Wait till next week. They look fantastic. I yeah, want they do look fantastic. Off. I want a Beast Wars buzzsaw from Wasp Manor. I want it now because yes. that was my first Transformer. I want a modern one. Speaking of bugs and not speaking about Common Rider, um, you know the. Uh, the shrapnel, the little uh, cyber or the Le- uh, legends cy- shrapnel, or what what they call oh, him, uh, so hard shell or something other. Uh, yeah. Uh, shrapnel is now brain fart. I, I can't remember what it's called now either. <laughs> Whatever he, like, he, he shrapnel. shrapnel to me. He, he shrapnel sharp to shot. me. Yeah, sharp shot. Sharp yeah. shot. Yeah, he he will forever be shrapnel to me because that's that was his first original. Official name, so uh, kiss my butt, Hasbro. I don't care what you say. He's always a trial. And uh, for, life, for yeah. copyrights and all. Yeah, that that thing looks looks fantastic. Um, and I have to say, uh, Whirl. Oh my gosh, yes. I, I had people complaining that Whirl was two G one. Really? Kid, I'm like, what? Kiss my butt right on the hole. That thing is gorgeous. I would love an IDW more to meet the eye world, but I just want a world because I love the character. I would love just to have a world, and I'm happy it's coming out. Yeah, I wish I could have got an STCC Metroplex. That thing with the chrome and everything, it's like, yes. Um, what else? Probably I know there's more. In. He has a mouth. Yeah. There's Swerve, which looks fantastic. There's Tailgate, that looks fantastic. There's Scoop, Cosmos. the Double oh, Target Master. Double Target Master Scoop, yes. Yes, that, <laughs> that, that, that one, one right there, I, 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 don't, I don't care. If I have $25 left in the bank, if I see tar- Double Target Master Scoop and he's $12, I'm buying it. That thing is just beautiful. It's nuts. Yeah. They're like, oh, let's just do a double target master. It's random. Yeah, I, I give you that. Um, the the thing is, though, it's like they totally updated Scoop himself, but uh, um, the the double target masters, I believe, Flintlock and uh, Pinpointer or something. I, I can't remember the the name of the target master partners, but Thank they did like, partner. yeah, they did like very little to upgrade them. They're still like. You know, little stick figures with gun barrels coming out their ass. But there's no need you know. to really update them. No, there's not. I mean, it's. I'm just thankful that they're doing the double target yeah. master. You know, uh, that just shows you that they are still paying attention to the masters line. 
I, I wish they would do some bona fide uh, headmasters like Brainstorm and Give Weird Wolf. Give me a and new Chrome Dome. I Chrome want Dome. a new Chrome Dome because yeah. of Morta meets the eye. And I want a new Rewind to, to go with him. Yeah. You probably want a Rosanna, too, to play with. But, um... <laughs> glit! <laughs> play, with his, play with his glit. He's laying in bed playing with his glit. Okay, my connection is... <laughs> oh, I can't hear y'all half the time, and then I come back, I hear playing with his glit. What? <laughs> <laughs> I do have a sealed... Um, Kiss play tape set, so <laughs> Transformer porn. You gotta love it. Um let's see here. Kinda I looking I didn't know we back. had uh, painted pictures of the repainted, remolded o- Omega Supreme, so I just saw that. That was pretty cool. Yeah. That that's already came out. I haven't seen ago. it anywhere. It's came out a long time ago. I prefer the original version. It looks so much better. I know you do, and you have it now, thanks to your brother. Yep, I have Omega Sentinel and Omega Supreme. So good, Ties. Um, oh, yeah, oh, the uh, Trail Cutter. Um, that, that's, that's out at retail great. now. Yeah, it's that's out at retail now. Um, I can't find one. Hmm. I want that whole wave because I love the IDW comics. They're the best Transformers fiction we've had ever. We, we also can't, can't forget the uh, the reissue of G1 Predaking as well uh, through Hasbro Toy Shop. Uh, and uh, everything, yeah. The it's a 30th anniversary reissue of and then Freda King. There's Wingblade, who looks terrible. The yeah, fan character looks terrible. Fan character can go poop on itself. It's so bad, so bad. Good lord, how bad is that yeah. thing? Terrible. I'll only get it if the toy's cool, but I really doubt it will be because that design is terrible bad. Hmm. Um, we'll come back on this later when I find pictures. Well, actually, why do we uh, need pictures? I know why everything I, was revealed. You know everything, but you don't mention everything, and I don't know everything off the top of my head. I have to actually look back and say, "Oh yeah, we that was mentioned revealed. everyone." But uh, let's see, Cosmos. We didn't talk Cosmos, did we? Yeah, Cosmos. Cosmos is well, cute. I mentioned him. Well, she had more of a hand, though, like a little, well, even a little flip is, out. One. I don't hear everything y'all said for a while because my connection died. Yeah, you're so, play, busy playing with your glit. Like now. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime no, John is not talking, robot. he's just not there. Yeah. He's tickling his glit. Do you want me to remove it from the box? Should yeah. I should I mention that my stores are full of bulkheads? Like the new Beast Hunters ones, they can't get rid of them. They just got like yeah. five uh, of them sitting on the shelf. All the other pages. Beast Hunters of Beast Hunters bulkhead and ratchet. And Bumblebee I would love to find Ratchet. are like I they are Ratchets. yeah they are clogging the shelves here in Louisville. I would buy Ratchet because he's the Doctor of Doom. Yeah, actually he kind of resembles a uh, Dinobot to me. Yeah, that's what's so great. That's, that's the one John Beast Hunter me. Deluxe I want is Ratchet because I love Ratchet in the show. Yeah. It's one of the good things about Transformers Prime, even though the series is garbage. Oh, what did I say that? Why did we have to bring up Transformers Prime? He had to be all negative, Nancy. Yeah. This is a terrible show. I disagree. Well, we don't listen to you. Yeah, you suck. <laughs> mm. Did I also mention I love the Chinese? Is it the Chinese? I brought this on another podcast. The Chinese brawl, the leader class without the clear plastic barrel. I bring him up at all times. Oh, until really? I, until until one leader day, class. I, mean, I yeah. will always mention him. I just saw him as I was scrolling through images. What? I'm trying to think what else that we haven't talked about that I, I'm not sure if we talked about it or not, because we talked about practically everything. They're doing Thundercracker and Skywarp. We already know that. Yeah. Hoist and all. Oh, the fall of Cybertron. Yeah, a hoist. Yeah. Well, technically they are IDW because Robots in Disguise uses the fall of Cybertron designs for Starscream in them. So, I'll get them. Yeah, I th- I think I may pick them up. It all depends, you know, on the financial situation at the time. Although I I have so much that is that is backlogged now that, you know, the small stuff that you can get at retail, like uh like the trail cutter and everything, I'll probably pass on those for a while, uh, and pick them up secondhand yeah. because 
you know, I, by the t- whenever I start actually getting some money, um, I'm going to try to get uh, all these pre-orders and stuff paid for. Yeah. <clears throat> I found but a couple of pictures. Do, really cool. The one thing I do want to say is these IDW Transformers are utterly fantastic as a concept that's happening because the latest Transformers fiction from IDW is utterly amazing. I will flat out say Mortem ECI is the best piece of Transformers fiction we have ever gotten. Show, comic, anyway. It is utterly fantastic. And Star Saber shows up next issue. It's going to be awesome. Hmm. Interesting. And seriously, if you get a chance to read it, it's worth reading because you will laugh your butt off. It's fantastic. I just I don't have time to get the comics in, nor the money. So I, I, I started back up with the... Uh, the regeneration one, and I got like the first such four. A bad or five. Comic. Well, That's I got like the first four comic. or five issues, and I stopped getting them because I moved. and And from what I hear, uh, Simon Furman totally de- derailed and unwrote half of the original G One Marvel comic. Regeneration one is such a bad comic. If you get a chance, I really do suggest reading Last End of the Wreckers, and then just reading More Than Meets the Eye. It's utterly worth reading. It's fantastic. I'm, I'm gonna. I have them all on Comicsology. I'm hoping I can share my account so I can have more people read it because it's so worth reading. Mm. Most definitely. I, I cannot gush about that comic enough. Well, is there uh, any other things that news-wise that you guys want to talk about before we wrap up here? Uh, we'll wait till next week uh, to talk about Transformers Prime. Um, up to the uh, um, Predacons Rising trilogy, and uh, we'll also discuss a, a few more things in depth, like the uh, the Beast Wars figures, thirty or the Beast Wars anniversary figures, I guess. Uh, we'll talk about those more next week. Um, but yeah. I, I just kind of want to do this back out there and and back in a in a. A schedule again. Uh, I know a lot of people may have forgotten about us or something, or just wrote us off. But you know, there was a reason why we were gone. Um, I have one more topic we can talk about. Just about the masterpiece van vote that's going on in Japan, and we have the current poll is Star Sabers winning at first place. Armada Optimus Prime is in second place. And in third place is Diatlas. Do you know how far apart they are? Out of all the primes, I said, uh, you know, that prime is one I hate, hate, hate the most. The I thing hate that is, prime. Japan loves microns. They yeah. absolutely love microns, and they're still making microns to this day. That's why I'm seeing our micron con um, the the Optimus Prime from that series getting as ahead as it did. Star Saber is going to win the poll. It's guaranteed because Japan loves Star Saber mm-hmm. almost as much as Optimus Prime himself. Well, you know, if we get if we get a Star Saber, they're going to have to do a Victory Leo. I would think. I hope they do. <clears throat> Even if they just did Star Saber, I would still be happy. I want a masterpiece Star Saber so bad. Mm. It's the one leader I want and masterpiece. I, I wouldn't mind uh, getting one of those myself. It's it's going to be such a good toy. Yeah. Well, um, Natsume, do you have anything else that you want to bring up before we wrap? No, I can't find... Okay, the Transformers fandom is a horrible place when I can't find pictures of SDCT a week after it's out. (laughs) Oh, yes. They didn't reveal anything at SDCC, except we got to see stuff that was at the BotCon panel they couldn't show us. The scoop, yeah. The scoop was actually seen first at... uh, STC. But we no, we first heard about it at BotCon, though. Yeah, but, well, we didn't actually, as a yeah. fandom, see it as a whole. Uh, That's I know, what I'm saying. You know, the, the, we got the, to see the few figures we didn't get to see at BotCon. We saw them at STCC, like Armada Starscream and Tailgate and mm. Scoop. That is cool. Well, uh, I would like to thank everyone for joining us on this edition of TFYLP. Um, it's been a little bit uh, stilted because uh, you know it's been a while since we were back in the swing of things, uh, but we want to get kind of uh, back on the right track. Uh, although I will say September is going to be very difficult for me as as far as a recording schedule because uh, I have two weddings to attend uh, that month and one of them is my own, um, <laughs> and 
and all the stuff that is in, involved with that, uh, you know, and leading up to it. So we may miss a, a week or two in September, uh, just one of four uh, forewarned people. But, uh, um, you know, we're, we're going to try to get back on a regular schedule here and hopefully in the next week or so in St. Galvatron can join with us and uh, as well as Mariah Baby, she can get back on here and, and uh, tell us about her uh, uh, experiences at TFCon. Costumes. Uh, in Canada. Yes. Um, she went to BotCon, TFCon, and San Diego Comic-Con all in a month. Yes. That's all nice. in three weeks. She is, she is a trooper. <laughs> That's for sure. But uh, for uh, Guard Convoy and Natsume Ryu, uh, I want to thank everyone for joining us, and we will see you next week on TFYLP. Check out geekexistence.com and our YouTube uh, channels. And uh, see you next time, everyone. Goodbye. Bye, everybody.